but I wanted to make a video to talk about some of the difficult realities of the Sinclair method if you're using this treatment for alcohol use disorder. We just finished our Monday Night Live group support call inside of our program, which I run. I love running this call because I get to interact with our members and just hear how people are doing. Um, but something got brought up on tonight's call that I think is really important for people to be aware of who are on the Sinclair Method because it's such a common experience that most, if not all of us, go through on this treatment. So I wanted to speak about that in this video, again, covering just some of the difficult realities that come along with the Sinclair Method journey because I think these might be blind spots that not everyone can anticipate or recognize when they start on this treatment. So let's dive in. So as always, this is not medical advice, but I'm going to be speaking from not only my own personal experience with the Sinclair Method, but also as someone who has served as a coach to hundreds of other people who are using the method uh, the last five plus years. So there's a really common experience that happens for many people on the Sinclair Method whereby they will start on the naltrexone medication according to their doctor's instructions and they will start taking it and they will notice that the medication is helping them drink less. And a lot of times people will be over the moon excited because they're experiencing alcohol in a different way for the first time in their life. Maybe they see themselves just thinking about alcohol less. Maybe they notice that they have more control when they drink. They're easily able to stop at just a couple of drinks when before they would drink drink way too much um, or other positive changes. Maybe they're having alcohol free days. Maybe they're just feeling for the first time that they have this control back over alcohol. And so typically when this happens, it's a really good sign that someone is clearly responding to the medication. But in the larger Sinclair Method world, we typically call this a honeymoon phase because what happens for a lot of people is after a month or even a few months and they kind of get through this honeymoon phase, if you will, of the method, what happens is reality sets in and life sets in and people realize that you know, there's still a stressful job and maybe they want to cope to escape that stressful work environment. Or maybe they find that alcohol is such a big part of their, their life or their daily habitual rout routine or their weekend routine. And reality kind of sets in and they realize that, wow, there, this is about so much more than simply taking a medication that's going to help me drink less because I've really got to navigate making these major lifestyle changes in my life so that I can truly become someone who does not rely on alcohol anymore to cope, for example, or to drink to numb or to drink out of habit. Now, one of the unique things about the Sinclair Method is, is that it does not require someone to go abstinent or totally alcohol-free from alcohol, being able to drink with control is actually a really reasonable and common goal uh, for this treatment for a lot of people. And so um, this isn't about getting to a place of being totally alcohol free for a lot of people, but rather it's about getting to a place where they have more balance in their relationship with alcohol, where they feel like they have this regained control over alcohol and where alcohol is really taking up a smaller part of their life. And they, again, they feel like they have genuine control over alcohol. One way I often hear people report it is that they feel like an indifference to alcohol where sure they can have a beer or two with friends but they're happy to not have more than that or they're happy to not drink at all. This is kind of like the end goal for a lot of people on the Sinclair Method and where a lot of people wind up uh, through this treatment when they stick with it for the long term. But again the challenge that so many people go through is kind of that middle ground of TSM. We kind of call it phase two of of the method where they start on the medication, they see all these amazing changes, but then that honeymoon or that newness uh, period kind of wears off and then real life sets in and they realize that there's so much more um, that needs to be done rather than just taking a medication to drink less. There's so much that we have to do, as I often like to say, where we meet the medicine halfway, where yes, we're following the Sinclair Method protocol, but we're also working to gradually change our habits and cultivate uh, different coping skills and also uh, really become someone whose life does not revolve around alcohol and become someone who doesn't rely on alcohol to cope. 
And if you're going through this on the Sinclair method, I just want to say that this is something that's really common. I know for me, uh, when I started on the medication, again, I was a daily drinker for nearly 10 years. And I remember starting the medicine just thinking, great, this medication is going to help me drink less. Like that's all I need. I'm good to go. And so I started on the medicine. I did start to see some pretty significant changes in my drinking week over week and month after month, um, the longer I was on the treatment. But what happened for me about halfway through the treatment protocol, so I was maybe four to six months into the treatment, um, real life started to set in. And I started to see how I was still relying on alcohol to kind of numb out or escape or cope with the stress of life, um, or that I was just still drinking out of habit because it was Friday night and I didn't even really feel like I wanted to drink uh, because the medicine was working more and more over time, but I would drink anyway. And so the longer I was on the method, I really began to see, you know, what the job of naltrexone was to help my brain um, unlearn this alcohol use disorder and really become de-addicted from the alcohol. But the other part of it was me really engaging the protocol, um, doing different hobbies, creating different coping tools, and changing my habits little by little over time. And this was a process. And at times it was a really painful process, to be honest, because um, as someone who, again, drank every day for nearly 10 years, there was a lot that I was kind of uh, suppressing and numbing and emotions that I just didn't allow myself to feel. And so the less that I drank, the more I started to feel these emotions surface. And it was almost overwhelming at times to where the easy choice uh, for me was just take naltrexone and drink and continue to numb the emotions. But again, I didn't want to be that person who relied on alcohol in that way anymore. I wanted to be somebody who could have a couple of drinks at a wedding and not feel the compulsion to get blackout drunk just because I had a bad day at work. And so I realized that I really had to shift and redefine my relationship with alcohol. And that was going to take work on my part to meet the medication halfway and gradually make these changes, um, you know, the longer and longer I was on the method. But I wanted to make this video today to really speak to that because I really do see this and observe it as a common challenge that a lot of people go through on the Sinclair method where they start out, they're really enthusiastic, they're seeing some of these really positive changes in their drinking and they're excited to find this solution to their to their alcohol use disorder. But then after a couple of months in, real life kind of sets in and they realize, okay, there's much more to it than just taking a pill. Like I've got to learn to feel these uncomfortable emotions. I've got to learn to cope uh, without alcohol or with less alcohol and I've got to really see who I am with this different relationship with alcohol. I've heard some people say I don't know who I would be if I didn't drink every day or if I didn't drink every weekend and that's a really common kind of feeling that a lot of us have because alcohol we call it a relationship with alcohol because it really has become this very intimate relationship that we have with this substance that's always there for us it's reliable we know what it's going to do for us and over time we've got to kind of break up with alcohol as we've known it and redefine this relationship with it. And that's, like I said, it's a difficult process. It's a painful process and it really takes time. We always tell people there's no rush to your end goals on this method because you really want to make sustainable changes day by day and week over week. So again, I just wanted to speak to this because it really is the realities of what it means to change our relationship with alcohol and become someone who is truly indifferent to alcohol and has this control back over alcohol. It involves a process of a lot of different things. You know, we have to uh, redefine our identity and how we relate with alcohol. We have to discover new coping tools and practice them regularly. We have to find new hobbies and habits and things that we enjoy in life outside of drinking. And all of this takes time. But one of the great things about the Sinclair method is that it can be done gradually and gently over time. And so just to give yourself grace through this process. And if you wanted to get more support with the um, habit change, the lifestyle change, creating new coping tools, this whole other aspect of TSM that really needs to come alongside. And in addition to the medication therapy, then I hope you will uh, look into the program we offer at Thrive. You can learn more about it with the link in my profile or just by going to thrivealcoholrecovery.com. Thank you for watching. I'll talk to you later. Bye for now.